Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step the way to value a company so we can figure out if the stock is over or undervalued. The first thing we do is enter the financial information into my discounted cash flow Excel model. We then add the debt and equity information. Finally, we determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. We then look at the financial ratios and compare them to its competitors. I'm going to walk you through the entire process so you could do it on your own after watching the video. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. The company we're going to look at is Crackberry. I mean Blackberry. That's what we used to call Blackberry because everybody was so addicted to it when it first came out. But then once the iPhone came out, nobody bought Blackberry anymore. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $2.66 billion and they're trading at $4.74. So they are a penny stock. A penny stock is a stock that's trading below $5. Now let's get the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's exactly what I'm doing in this video. And you can see they have two years of negative free cash flow, 2017 negative 293 million, 2020 negative 18 million. So that means they spent more money than they generated. That's not a good sign. You want companies that bring in positive free cash flow so they grow the company. Now I'm gonna pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And in two of the four years, they had negative net income. And then I'm going to pull the revenue, which are the sales for each year. So you can see they haven't been growing too much. They were 1.3 billion in revenue and they dropped to 1 billion. Let's look at the capital structure of the company so we can figure out the discount rate we need to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $23 million of interest on their debt. Yahoo Finance lists $35 million for other income and expenses. The interest expenses combined in this number, they put another expense in here, so I had to go to a different source to find it. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liabilities section of the balance sheet. They have current debt of $606 million. That's debt due within 12 months. And they don't have any non-current debt. So that means all their debt is due within 12 months. So that means they have to use cash to pay off the debt or issue new debt to pay off this $606 million. According to the income statement, they don't pay taxes, probably because they don't generate any income. Let's get the cost of equity. We need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a beta of 1.04. So the stock moves with the market, so it's not volatile. Now let's get their current assets. We need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. And that's $1.2 billion. Let me show you what's in current assets. It's mostly cash, $909 million. They also have $215 million of net receivables. Net receivables is a total amount of money owed to a company minus the amount that's owed that is likely not to be repaid. And they have $52 million of other current assets. Other current assets are uncommon or insignificant, but you might be able to find what they are on the 10K. Let's see their current liabilities. We also need that to calculate the current ratio later, and that's $1.1 billion. And the current liabilities is made up of current debt, $606 million, $31 million of accounts payable, that's money the company owes to its creditors, like the banks for the interest payments, or its suppliers. Anything in current assets is owed within 12 months. They also have $18 million of taxes payable, that's the taxes the company owes to the government. They have $171 million of accrued liabilities. These are expenses a company accrues but has not yet paid. A common accrued liability is payroll and payroll taxes. So you have employees working throughout the month, but you don't pay them till the end of the month or the beginning of next month. 
So those expenses are accruing until you actually pay them. Then it gets removed from accrued liabilities. Deferred revenue is the best liability to have. This is money the company received but has not yet delivered the product. Let me give you a good example. This doesn't have to do with BlackBerry though. Say you buy a magazine subscription for $120 for one year and you send in the $120 in advance. So the magazine company receives the money but has not yet delivered any products. So they book $120 through deferred revenues and every month they send you the $10 magazine. And when they do that, they take $10 out of deferred revenues and book that to revenue. Let's look at their stockholders equity. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities. That's 2.5 billion. Common stock is not the actual stock that's trading in the market. When a company issues a stock, they choose an arbitrary number to apply to each share, like a dollar or a penny, and they book it onto their balance sheet. This is just really, really coincidental that their common stock on a balance sheet of 2.8 billion almost equals their market cap. You probably won't find another company like this. I've never seen the common stock equal the market cap. It's generally a lot different. And retained earnings is if you summed up all the previous net incomes. The net income is the bottom of the income statement. If you summed up all the previous years since they started and took that number and subtracted all the dividends they paid for all the previous years they've been open, that's your retained earnings. It's really bad sign to see negative retained earnings because I know this company did generate a nice profit at some point, so they must have taken lots of losses to bring their retained earnings to negative. They have negative $33 million on accumulated other comprehensive income. And this is unrealized gains and losses on investments. And the investments are usually derivatives, insurance policies, pension plans, things like that. Let's get their operating income. That's how much money the company makes on its operational business. And they're negative $183 million. So just from its regular day-to-day -day business, they can't even generate a profit. And every year they're negative. But in 2019 and 18, they reported a positive net income because they had profits from other income. Other income is income that a company generates that's not from its main business. A common type of other income is when a company sells its assets. It might have sold a part of the business, it might have sold a factory, it might have sold some actual machinery. That's not a great way to grow a business is when you sell it. But that's just what happened in BlackBerry's case. In 2018, they had $600 million of other income and $140 million in 2019. Let's look at the capital structure of the company. They have 19% debt and a cost of debt is 3.8%. They have 81% equity, and the cost of equity is 10.3%, and the WAC is 9%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. Those are all negative. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today's value using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $6 billion. We divide that by 561 million shares. And we get an intrinsic stock price of $11. They're trading at about $5. So they're trading at a 57% discount. So it is a buy according to the model. So let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 646. So they're also saying the stock is a buy. I had to use an alternative discounted cash flow model to come up with a value. My main discounted cash flow models came up with a negative value for this company. And as you know, a stock can't be negative. Let's see what stock has been trading at. So it looks like it was up to about $13 at one point a few years ago, but it's been dropping. It looks like it's at a really low point. So just because a company is not performing well and they're posting negative free cash flow, negative net income, it doesn't mean the stock is not worth buying. You wouldn't pay $30,000 for a 15 year old Honda Accord with 100,000 miles. But if you really needed a car and a Kelly Blue Book value was $1,000 and a person was willing to sell for 500, you would probably buy the car as long as it ran well. Same thing with a stock. Just because it's not doing well, it just has to go low enough to find that right price point where people want to buy it. So at this point, people are willing to spend $5 on it, but in the future, they may be willing to spend more. Let's look at the financial ratios to get more information. They have a negative PE, 
They have a good price of sales and a really good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share, and earnings per share is net income over shares outstanding. Net income is negative, so the company has a negative PE. When companies have negative PE, it said you should look at the price to sales ratio. So let's look at the price to sales ratio. That's stock price over sales per share. And sales per share is calculated by taking the revenue divided by the shares outstanding. I like to see a price to sales ratio below 2.5. They're at 2.6. So in terms of the stock price, they are providing a good amount of sales. Price to book ratio of 1.1, that's stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. This indicates that if the company went bankrupt, the company would be able to pay its shareholders almost 100% of what their stock is worth. Their current ratio is 1.1 and their ROE is negative. So current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so that's good, they can cover their current liabilities. ROE is negative because that's net income over equity and they have negative net income. Their interest coverage ratio is negative because their EBIT is negative, that's earnings before interest and taxes. So that's not good, they need to take on more debt in order to pay their interest expense. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Adobe, Microsoft, Oracle, Palo Alto Networks, Square, and VMware. They're all in the same industry as BlackBerry. And in terms of PE, BlackBerry is worse than the average, they're negative, so you can't really look at their PE. But in terms of price to sales and price to book, they are the best in the industry. They have the best ratios. It's really great to see they have a good amount of sales relative to the stock price. But if you can't convert those sales to profits, it doesn't mean much. You can have trillions of dollars in sales, but if you have no profits, it's meaningless. I could tell you a business where I could get a trillion dollars in sales. I would sell $100 bills for $95. I can have an infinite number of sales, but I would lose money. I would have no profits. My price to sales ratio would be through the roof. It would look amazing, but my earnings would be negative every year. Their current ratio is lower than the average. The average is 1.6, they're 1.1, but they're still above 1, so I think that's fine. Negative ROE, we can't look at that. They do have the lowest debt of all the companies, so they do have more room to borrow, which is a really good sign if you own the stock. In terms of market cap, they're the smallest by far. The second smallest is Palo Alto Networks, and they're almost 10 times as big. So let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching.